class, we're gonna do a lesson on laying out stairs. Are you all excited? Yeah, yes. come on over everybody. I'm gonna introduce stair layout to you, but and I'm gonna throw a lot of things out at you and I don't expect you to remember everything today. This is the first time we've ever talked about it, right? And the reason we're doing it is we need a set of stairs for our tiny house because we're inviting the public to come in, right? We got a temporary set for construction. Now we need something that's more towards building code. I made a nice little packet for everybody. How to lay out a set of stairs to ensure a comfortable and safe climb. In residential construction and commercial construction, stair layout is very vital to the safety of a building. Would you all agree to that? Yes. And why? Because the general public is using it, people are going up and down it, so it has to be done properly. And there are codes that are applicable to building stairs. And to find those codes, if you look on the sheet I gave you, Riser Height and Tread, IBC, International Building Code, subpart 1011.5. You go to that book, you look that up, you're gonna find what you need to be in compliance with the code. The purpose of building codes is for public safety. So buildings don't fall down, so people don't get hurt. Access to get out proper and all that good stuff. The height of a riser and the depth of a tread. This is known as a stringer. This is the riser. This is the tread. The golden rule Setting up a set of stairs has always been the ideal stair design follows a simple formula, the sum of two risers in one tread. So two of these, let's just call them seven, and seven is 14, and then 11 comes up to 25. Everyone get that? So two, two risers at seven and a tread at 11, seven, seven, 11 equals 25. That's the golden rule, okay? Or the 7 rule. That refers to a general guideline where the stair riser are no more than seven and the tread is no less than 11. 7 11. That's the other rule. When you lower the rise, you need to increase the tread because you're taking short, longer steps. Does that make sense? If you go outside in the public, you're walking in a park, going up a hill, you're going to notice that. You might only, you might only rise four and then it's going to stretch out. It's, so, this is called the stringer once we cut it. So, outside on our landing, we have an overall height from the gravel to the top of the existing tread, 27 inches, including the decking. How many stairs are we gonna have? 27 inches, everybody. How many stairs are we gonna have? Three to four. If I have three, 27, could I divide? If I divide 27 by three, 27 divided by three, that's nine. Can I do three? Why? Because it's more than seven. We can't do three, right? If you look at this drawing, there's one, two, three steps, and then the landing. The landing counts as a step. You guys get that? Because you're stepping up onto the landing. So that counts as a step. So our stringer is going to have three steps, but when we put it up against the landing, it's gonna, there's gonna be a total of more. Make sense? So here we go. 27 divided by four is six and three quarters. It's gonna be a rise of six and three quarters and a run of 11 or a tread of 11. So what is our total stair run gonna be? We have three steps to the landing, 11, 11, 11. We're gonna have a total of 33 inches of a, of a total run. Makes, makes sense? So these are the things we think about when we're laying out a set of stairs. What is our run available to us? What is the demand for the rise? It has to be, we have to work with whatever we have. We have to work within it. And we have to stay within that seven inch range. Okay, so here we go. This over here represents a two by 12, everybody. And a two by 12 is actually one and a half by 11 and a quarter, right? You have actual and nominal, right? So. One and a half by 11 and a quarter. This one here is five feet. But to lay this out, everybody, I take my square, I find 11 on the blade, and I find six and three quarters on the tail. I bring it to the edge of my board, and I put 11, six and three quarters. So here's the outside edge of the board. If you can imagine, this is a board, 11 and a quarter six and three quarters. I'm going to draw this line right here. 
Everything's going to be off a 90 degree now. The cuts are at 90. Go to that mark. I'm going to come back to 11. I'm going to make this cut right here. Right here, right here. There's my top step. I can go right here. 11, 6 and 3 quarters. If I've done this properly, this should lay out this way. Let's drop down 6 and 3 quarters to 11. Can you all see that? Go here. 6 and 3 quarters. 11. Slide down. 6 and 3 quarters. 11. One, two, three. You need to come down one more time. Now, the last step, six and three quarters. On the last step, if I'm going to be putting material on this, and I am, something to step on it, I have to, I have to drop this cut so the stairs will drop the, uh, whatever we got going on the tread. When I step off the ground and step onto the tread, I'm at six and three quarters. We're gonna use three quarter plywood for our example here. So I'm gonna drop this to six. 90 degree angle. Now, there it is right there. I get myself a knife. Now, outside we're gonna be cutting this with a saw. Let's cut it with a knife here. Here, here, all right, let's see if we've done this correct, so if we do this, it should fit in here, can you see, can you see, saw, saw, see, Here's our cut. This is our original layout with no treads. Put this in place now. It should fit right in there. And you can see that drop that we made. Now I'm going to just staple it down. A couple other points to lay it out instead of stairs. I'm going to read you the International Building Codes, just some of the highlights, some of the key requirements. Stair widths serving 50 or more occupants. You all know what an occupant is? Somebody who's in the building, right? Must be a minimum of 44 inches wide. Those serving less than 50 can be 36 inches wide. So how wide are the stairs in our school minimum? 44, minimum. They're probably wider, right? What's the minimum of the stairs that are gonna be on your home coming into your front? 36. Might be wider. Some people like 42, 48, five, six feet, whatever, you know, coming in. Inside your home, going up to your second story, it's going to be 36. Headroom is important. Stairways must have a minimum headroom of 80 inches. So that means when I'm coming down the stairs, the step that I'm on, whatever ceiling's above me, my head, I have to have 80 inches to clear it. Do we have 80 inches in the tiny house? Does anyone know? No. We don't. We have six foot four. And there's, that's, a, um, that's an allowance for that type of building. Riser height must be between four and seven. Uh, tread must be a minimum depth of 11. And so what's important about that, everybody, if you look here, if I go like this now, and I put a tread on here, I have to have an overhang on the tread. And the reason I have to have an overhang on the tread is so that when I'm walking and my foot comes down, I don't hit the riser. So then I have one above it. Now, this point right here, so this point right here has to be 11 inches. Make sense? So this cuts 11, or from here to here is 11, however you look at it. And then we have this one. All right, those are our treads. Handrails are required on both sides of the stairway. They must extend 12 inches beyond the top riser, and one tread depth beyond the bottom. So if you're outside you've got, and you're stepping off, that, that railing's got to go a little bit past the step. If you're going up, it has to go a little bit past. Landings are required at the top and bottom of each stairway, every 12 feet of vertical. So if they're building a set of stairs and you're going 
if I'm going up 16 feet from this floor to the next, I'm only allowed to go up 12 feet, then I need to have a landing and then go up to the next floor. If I were gonna go 16 feet from this floor to the next floor, and I put a, one set of steps going all the way up with no break in the middle. Ah, stability, you now you could stabilize it. What the concern is there, everybody, is what if you were to, well, first off, if you, if you need to take a break, if the person's going up and they need to take a break, you know, some people can't climb that many stairs for their health, health reasons, or their age, or whatever we're talking about. So it gives people a break at, uh, up, up to that uh, 12 foot mark. Also, what if you were to fall down a set of stairs? If you fell down a set of stairs that was 20 feet tall, you, you're gonna fall 20 feet down. Right? So it, it, it limits the, the length that you might fall down the stairs as well. All of those things are considered when it comes to safety and health, right? Uh, here's an interesting one too. Visual contrast. Stair treads and risers should visually contrast what does that mean? What, what does it mean when I have to have a visual contrast? It's gotta be a different. I can't, I, can't, I can't have a set of stairs that are all white, right? You, you, you're definitely gonna wipe out. You got nothing to work at, right? Go up a set of black stairs or purple stairs or white stairs, there's no way. So it has to be, you know, white and brown, white and yellow, whatever. Or it has to be illuminated. If they are, if they are all the one color, then you would have to illuminate the riser or illuminate the step. Make sense? Accessible stairways. They must be specific requirements outlined in the International Building Code and the ADA, including wider stairs, accessible landing. The American Disabilities Act, the ADA. Okay? All right. So, I think I'll stop there. I, I gave you way too much for one sitting but that's our introduction to stairs okay now what we're going to do is follow this up by going outside so a few people are going to go out and lay out and cut and get some stairs to our time the rest of you are going to go work on your doors and your windows and trim and all that stuff all right all right that's it all the way through or uh, stop anywhere after this drops off It should be what six and three quarters up, right? Voila! Money. Voila! Mm. Is that what he said? Money? Is that what he said? How many of those do we need, fellas? Uh, two. Two? You think? How three. about three? Three. Right. Three. three. One okay. in the middle. You want to have a minimum of three. Okay. okay. So now you use that as a pattern. Cut. Cut the other two. Well, the other All right, there she is, fellas. Nice. That was our. That was our do triple or double. What do we call that? Triple. Triple. So today, uh, during our shop class, we talked about the theory of stair building, layout stair building, and to cap it off, you guys laid out the stairs for our tiny house and you cut the treads. Nice job, fellas! Yeah. Stand her up, get up a roof rafter so we can see it with your eyewear on. All right, so following our stair exercise today, you guys practiced laying out roof rafters for the chicken coop. Nice job, nice job. Does anyone remember the pitch? 12. 12, nice. How many units of run did we have? How many units of run did you have on a four foot span? Two. Two, nice. There it is. All right, good job, everybody.